In the time past, the role of perfumer was much respected, a blessed apothecary in the eyes of many, but after entering the battlefields of the Shattering, they performed no such role, trading their aromatics for poisons and explosives. There are 6 aromatics in total and only 2 of them that use as a weapon. We can only hold up to 10 perfume bottles in the game, so to take down a single boss with them is nearly impossible. Perfumers are not only using aromatics as their offensive weapons, According to Reddit posts and field surveys, they also wield the Earth Steel Dagger and the Shield as well. Just to be clear, I can only use either Perfumers or Depraved Perfumers loadout, but not the Omen Killer. So let's see how far their arsenal can take me through the game. Before we start, make sure to subscribe and follow my Twitter so you don't miss future challenge runs like this. Because the whole build is to make use of the perfumes effectively and Spark Aromatic being the only offensive perfumes, it surprisingly scales with Dex. So I pick Warrior class as he has the highest decks out of other classes. After reaching Limgrave and getting all the essential needs like Tauren, I went straight to Kaelid. There are a bunch of stuffs I need to get in this area and one of them of course the Radigan Sword Seal. A small boost of stats for early game. Since we're playing as a perfumer, it's necessary for me to cosplay as one. Luckily, there is a Traveler Perfumer set in the Swamp of Aeonia and it's very easy to get. It doesn't require any boss battle or anything. I also got both medallion along the way to get to Altus Plateau for the Perfumer's Cookbook in order to craft some perfume. There are 4 Perfumer's Cookbooks in the whole game and most of them located in Altus Plateau. But because I misread some of the informations, I didn't get all of them right away. I did get my first cookbook with the cost of my life and of course I can now craft some explosives. This run is very grindy, not gonna lie, but I'm still grateful that most of the materials are easy to get. I just have to spend another hour to store them for the next boss. Altus Bloom and Miranda's Powder These two materials are the core of every perfume's recipes. Altus Bloom is literally everywhere, so it's not a problem. Miranda's Powder, on the other hand, requires me to kill a big-ass flower, or the small one if I'm lucky enough. There is a farming location for those, but we'll get to that later on. After crafting some explosive perfumes, I completed Kenneth Hyde's quest by killing the commander of the fort. Spark Aromatic is surprisingly powerful in my opinion. By doing this, I was rewarded with an Earth Steel Dagger. Now I have a melee weapon to defend myself. But before we continue, I have to make things clear. I will not use Fate build for this dagger because the point of this run is to rely on the perfumes instead of the dagger, so this weapon will stay on default. But I'm still allowed to upgrade them if that makes sense, using the smithing stone of course. So with that, I start my farming simulator and by getting as many Miranda's powder as I can get. The closest one located in the waypoint ruins and because I was too lazy to fast travel to another location, I have to beat the mad pumpkin head. The flower has enormous health bar, so this will take some time just to get one. In the meantime, I also acquired the smithing stone bell bearing by killing the crystallians. Didn't expect the dagger to be that weak, but that's okay. For now, I only have 5 perfume bottles and I think I want to try it with Margit. For Margit, I'm solely using the spark aromatics, because I don't have enough materials for the others. 20 decks as of right now, and the perfumes just did a massive damage to Margit. Using all 5 of them just made him enter his second phase in no time. Casting time is also fast. The spark actually does double damage upon casting. The powder is the one that deals the most damage while the explosion also inflicts some damage but I suspect it was fire damage and wasn't that significant as well. The dagger on the other side, I was struggling just a bit. I never focused on the dagger before and I need to get used with the moveset in general. Attack speed is undoubtedly fast, but sometimes it's too fast and I didn't pay attention to get my recovery time to dodge. It's probably the same case with fist weapons. For the first boss, it's not really a big problem. I beat him first try even though I have to drink a couple flasks. I visited Perfumer's Grotto just to see how the place looks like and 
I don't like it. It's too early for me to farm in this location and even with the perfumers themselves can kill me pretty quick. So I think it's time to get some other stuffs. Second cookbook located in Shaded Castle. I only ever been in this place once and this is the second time I visited for the sake of this run. I feel super cautious since I realized it was I was too underleveled and weak. So I tried to avoid as many direct conflict as I could. To optimize the potency of the perfumes, I need to get the perfume talisman as well, located in the perfumer's ruins. I mean, I was there before but I didn't know it was located in the same location. This location is also great for farming Altus Bloom. Just have to be careful with the Omen Killer. At the same time, I gather more bottles in the accessible location as well. The thing with every boss is I have to farm right after using the perfumes, so if I can beat them first try, it really saves me some materials. Well, things were going smoothly with Morgan. I hope I can say the same with Godric. And after gathering some flowers, I think I'm ready to fight Godric. I'm using the poison spray mist this time to see how much build up it can give. By far, this is the best poison sources for bosses. It's even more effective than Scarlet Rod. I don't know why I didn't use this in my poison video, but I think with 5 or 6 bottles, if used in the right time, it can kill Godric in an instance. I should have bring more, but I rely on using Spark Aromatic instead. One thing about Poison Spray Mist, it has slow casting time. I mean, even that, it's not that slow compared to Poison Mist Incantation. It even creates a small poison cloud for a short period of time. I think it's the best choice for slow bosses like Godric. The materials are very easy to get. It's the same with Spark Aromatics with Poison Bloom, which you will get them as well by killing the giant flower. So basically, farming for Spark Aromatics, also farming for Poison Spray Mist as well. It's hitting two birds with one stone. I died once because of the Fire Breath, but it was only a minor mistake for me, and I killed Godric on the next round. As usual, after getting my first great rune, I have to flex it to everyone in the roundtable hold and get my special privilege from Ver to get access to Mogwin's dynasty. But I have to complete some of his tasks and one of them is killing Magnus the Beast. This is a great moment for me to try to get used with NPCs. Using Spark Aromatic as my main damage dealer was no joke. But I only have 7 of them which is not a lot, the rest of the fight I have to improvise. Anyway, yeah, I beat him, got the Maiden's Blood, and finally able to farm something else other than flowers. So, cookbook number 3 is located in Oriza side tomb, and if I want to be honest, I hate this place. If not because the help of the YouTube tutorial, I'm most likely to get lost with all these teleporters. Not only that, but the Im statue is also very annoying and feels like I wasn't supposed to be in this location right now. But long story short, I got the recipe and went back to Limgrave to get some flowers. For the next boss, I'm using the Iron Jar Aromatic, giving you a massive poise health, physical damage negation, and heavy dodge roll for 40 seconds. I'm using this for the Draconic Tree Sentinel, which probably the worst decision ever because it gives you minus 60% for lightning damage, but that's okay because he only used lightning attacks on his second phase. I could have used this for another boss, but because I'm at Lindell right now and Tree Sentinel is the closest one over here, so here we are. To be fair, it's just a survival battle honestly. If I can hold for 40 seconds, then I can beat him easily. But the reality speaks differently. By far, it's the toughest fight I had currently and it redrained most of my materials. Spark Aromatic also wasn't deal that much damage against him, but it's still better option compared to using Dagger because I don't have a decent poise in general and wasn't too infested in stamina as well, he can one-hit me with certain moves. It's actually very risky and maybe I should have taken on another shard bearer before going for 3 sentinel but I refuse. I was sick at the moment because of covid so I couldn't think straight and relying on my natural instinct to go brute force against him instead of looking for another solution. 
Because I ran out of materials and I was too lazy to grind more flowers, I decided to use dagger only to beat him. The damage was so underwhelming and I thought dagger only run was gonna be easy if I ever gonna do that one, but I take back my words. Especially a default dagger without any SO4 or any specific build, it's gonna take a while to beat a 3 sentinel. Dodging wasn't really a problem for me since I'm trained enough to dodge every incoming attack possible, but I could miss some attacks sometimes. Dagger also has a very small range, so some of my attacks can easily be missed. With only patience and determination, I finally put his face on the dirt. That wasn't going as planned and I think some of the perfumes could work more effectively for the right boss. So I think I can chill for a bit by fighting Radan. I could go for Renala but I was too lazy to deal with Red Wolf at the moment so I think yeah, I definitely can take Radan. My attempt on using one of each perfumes against bosses are mostly failed but at least I gave them a try before actually beating them. For Radan, I'm using the Blood Bowl Aromatics. This one is probably every speedrunner or challenger's favorite because it buffed the hell out of your body without any drawbacks for 60 seconds. Well, if used correctly it can be a powerful item buff but me. The first time user. The experience wasn't great. First thing I fought Radon, second thing I didn't use any one shot method so this will come out as a waste. I mean not really a waste but I couldn't leave the potential it has. And yet Radon kicked my ass multiple times and correct me if I'm wrong but I think that ocean cheese has been patched. I was too tired and decided to gank him. Looking back at my footage, I think I should be more patient because it's completely possible to beat him with only a dagger and perfumes. The spark aromatics deal quite some damage to him and his second phase wasn't as crazy as I expected, maybe on the next run. After getting the second great rune, I can now enter the Lindell without any issue. But before that, I need to make sure I have enough materials to fight Godfrey. So I took an hour to harvest some Miranda's powders. Moving to capital city. Because apparently you can get another earth steel dagger without starting the NG+. I decided to power stance the weapon since I didn't use the shield either. This time I think I'm able to move my farming spot to perfumer's grotto. Usually when diving into dungeons or cave, it prevents us to fast travel because we haven't beat the main boss in that area. Same case with the perfumer's grotto. Omen Killer and Miranda's flower are the boss in that area. So it took me some time to beat them because I got killed by the Omen Killer a couple times but finally I took them down. And perfumer's grotto is officially my new farming spot. The last cookbook is located underground near Nokron. So this is a lesson for me to look at YouTube before assuming things. I thought because the location was near Nokron, the only way to get there by is by progressing through Rani's quest, which is what I'm doing right now. But you can actually go there from a guarded elevator in Leonia. But because the mistakes has been made, I plan on doing Rani's quest by going to Caria Manor to fight Loretta. Another material wasted but this time it's worth it. I'm fully using the Spark Aromatic this time, without any addition except the daggers. You know, I always use my dagger in every battle whether I only use them or with the perfumes. It's not a hard fight with Loretta. I'm actually holding 8 perfume bottles and it's almost enough to take her down. I was expecting a mobile fight since Loretta moves a lot, but even with the circumstances, Spark Aromatics will still do the job perfectly. I only used the dagger on last seconds and the battle was ended pretty fast.
I spoke with Rani, exploring Nokron until I realized that part of Ainsel River can be accessed from Leonir, another elevator where a bunch of giant ants reside. I think I only visited this location once during my first playthrough ever. You can buy the cookbook from the isolated merchant located in the building. Because I have access to Lindel now, I can get the rest of the bottles and now I have all the 10 perfume bottles in inventory. Facing the Golden Godfrey Using the uplifting aromatic to boost physical damage and negates 90% of incoming attacks once. This perfume works very similar with Opaline Bubble Tear and it can also use to buff allies as well. If you ever use summons or maybe call your friends or something. It's probably one of the perfumes that successfully used in the battle other than Spark and the Poison Spray Mist. Well, a Godfrey is... Godfrey. By now, I already say it a thousand times but I'll say it again. Godfrey is my favorite boss fight because of the clear pattern he has. The Spark Aromatics is somehow effective against Godfrey but as expected, 9 of them are not enough to take him down. So I have to get better at using daggers. Using dual daggers are really effective to deal consecutive attacks, but for me it's kinda hard to match the timing with enemy attack. With Godfrey as my test subject, I would say I handle him pretty good. I went back to Shaded Castle to farm the Brave Perfumer's outfit because not gonna lie, their drip is kinda fire. By the way, I got the regular Perfumer's outfit but I forgot to record. I should have used the Silver Tear Mask to boost the item at Discovery because they have a very low drop rate. After 2 hours of grinding and I only got the gloves and the pants so I pulled out for now and continue with the main story. We're going against Morgoth, and I'm gonna follow the same ritual as people told me before, which is get rid the Radigan Sword Seal and replace it with something else. I got the Dragon Crest Talisman to negate physical damage, because I know I'm gonna get hit a lot by Morgoth. Next talisman is the Prothesis Heirloom to boost my dexterity. But in order to acquire the, this talisman, I have to meet Gori and start Millicent's quest. I forgot I have to beat Commander O'Neill to get the needle as well, and as you can see here, I was having trouble with his summons apparently, even though the spark aromatics did a number on him. So I call it a day, and get the fire scorpion charm instead. It boosts fire damage and I thought this will be useful for the spark aromatics. After leveling up for a bit, I think I'm able to destroy O'Neill. Well, almost actually. His summons becomes really annoying on his second phase, but because he is categorized as a field boss, that means I can run away like a real man, craft more perfumes, and get back to him. And with that, I beat his ass. I gave the needle to Gori, talked to Millicent, and finally acquired the Prothesis Heirloom. It is time to fight more god. With everything I have currently, I think I'm ready. I thought this fight is gonna be a bit tough, so... I'm gonna use Spark Aromatics and the Poison Spray Mist. I wasn't thinking on using any buff on other perfumes because I don't want to waste their materials. So the first couple minutes of fighting him, I tried to find a perfect window for my daggers. The perfumes on the other hand are quite flexible with the fast casting time and also reasonable range. It also deals a lot of damage to Morgoth. I'm planning to use most of my perfumes before reaching his second phase to see how many I got left. As soon as I reached his second phase, I blew out the poison spray mist to his face to inflict deadly poison. It actually took a lot of his health. Now the rest of the fight, I have to use my daggers. As expected, my daggers will be more useful on his second phase. His openings is pretty big for close range weapons, and I can land a couple hits if I'm lucky enough. It's actually very convenient for me to have two sparks bottle left, so I can just deplete his health patiently with my daggers afterwards. The fight was surprisingly not that long and I beat him first try.
Before we continue to the fire giant, let's just check our recipe. The only one I haven't used so far is the acid spray mist. Right, so I'm gonna come out clean this time. I did some stupid shits. So the first stupid shit I did is to get the materials called formic rock. The only way to farm this material is by killing the giant ants and their queen. It's one of those annoying mobs, but with my current level, I don't really have any problem with that. But the drop rate is a bit low for a single item. Formic rock is also limited, and you know when you don't know a good location to farm, you can just check YouTube, right? Well, apparently no one has ever made a video about it so far. From wiki, it says deep root depths because it has a bunch of ants, but that also means anywhere as long as there are a bunch of ants, right? So I picked the Ainsel River and spent a couple hours just to get two formic rocks. And I need four. I was about to give up until I tried the old palace where you can find the annoying underground astel. There are a good amount of formic rocks laying on the ground. Of course, I spent another hour to farm some regular materials because I ran out of them eventually. I've spent a lot of time in this playthrough and finally I reached the mountain tops of the giants. The first thing I got is the bell bearing because I was feeling underpowered as hell without the perfumes. Okay, so remember when I said I did stupid shits back then? The second dumb shit I did is not reading the full descriptions of an item. So for Fire Giant, I was planning to use the acid spray mist. I was wondering why it didn't require Aeonian Butterfly or anything and use Formic Rocks instead because I thought it's gonna be the superior version of Poison Spray Mist. I was wrong. It was so stupid and the consequences with that stupidity is by getting killed by Fire Giant multiple times. The fight itself is very frustrating. The funny thing is, I still didn't realize that Assist Premise doesn't do anything to him, and I thought because it doesn't have enough buildup to rot him, like the Poison Premise, it, it was so stupid. But I did change my strats, so because I see the Spark Aromatics doesn't deal much damage to him, I think I have no choice but to fully rely on my daggers. The daggers themselves doesn't deal any significant damage to begin with, but it's the only option I got. I still use the perfumes once in a while because they still do more damage in the first phase. Patience is the key. It took me a couple minutes just to get to his second phase. Things are getting tougher for real. If those damage took me a long time, well, this might take longer. Look at those damage. It doesn't even deserve to be called damage. It's more like a scratch. I need to make a bunch of scratches to create chronic infection to him. The fight was so long, I think it's around 30 plus minutes. I still try to find the opportunity to use my perfumes once in a while. Sometimes I died in the middle of it and it took me another 30 plus minutes before finally killed him. Uh, oh yeah, I make sure that last hit is from the spark aromatics. Now okay, that was a long ass fight, and I think I deserve a break but to catch my breath. So how about we fight Godskin Duo? I mean, I beat them without summon or sleep pods nowadays, so it should be it should be an easy fight, right? Wrong! If you think Fire Giant is the longest fight I had in this run, I can confidently say this Godskin Duo fight is the longest of them all. I wasn't having fun at all. I died a lot, and I barely cut half of their health. The spark aromatics didn't do much on them and basically I couldn't find any other way besides using the perfume and the dagger. So there are two options I could pick. Number one, I could just give up like a real man. Or number two, admit that I'm a pussy and ask Bernhall to help. Well, guess what? I choose number two. Even with Bernhall, I'm still struggling because the damage dealer is supposed to be on me and I'm lacking on playing that part. But Bernhall really helped me a lot for the first half of their HP, so with everything I learned, I can just do this patiently and spark them as often as I can. I still have to use the pillars to avoid the donut roll and spam the perfumes if I still have them. I'm focusing on the Gutskin Noble because his pattern is more readable than the skinny one. If I'm playing this solo, I can land 2 hits max on him before having to back out a little bit. 
The way I say it, maybe doing the solo is possible but I couldn't get hit a single time. So basically a no hit run on Gatskin Duo or else I'm gonna be dead afterwards. With the help from Bernhal, we finally beat the Gatskin Duo. I gave him the honor for the final hit but apparently he died so I took it myself. I can say the fight will get even harder after Gatskin Duo. I used to enjoy Malekith's fight since I memorized all of his attacks but this time I got humble. Mostly on his first phase. Going full melee wasn't my first experience with him but because I know he doesn't have a lot of health, I saved some of my Sparks Aromatics for his second phase. I tried to experiment for a bit on what's good and not good when fighting him with daggers. Range is always a problem with him because his first phase was a bit difficult to read. But I can see getting close to his face is rewarding. I can spare one or two bottles on his first face just to make it easier but it doesn't change the playstyle in general. I have to keep going back and forth so I can land one or two hits if possible. Passing his first phase took me quite some time but his second phase wasn't as easy as usual I would say. I need to be more cautious with his jumping attacks because usually the all slicing attacks is the easiest one to dodge and has the biggest openings as well. But in this fight I encountered some other variations that I'm not quite familiar with so yeah I need to be careful. If I'm not careful I can mistake those moves and got hit. After I ran out of perfumes, it will be as usual. Surprisingly, Malekith took significant damage from regular dagger attacks, maybe because he didn't have a lot of health to begin with. But I took it for granted. Malekith is done and we can move on to Gideon. But before that, I finally got the robe baby! Let's go! Just spent an hour or two to get that drip over there. <laughs> Alright, uh, so this is the moment I realized that Acid Spray Mist doesn't work like Poison Spray Mist. This is a little embarrassing but let's just say I sprayed Gideon with it and quickly craft the Poison Spray Mist to add more effect while he's doing his monologue just to realize that it was too late and I wasted my only opportunity to poison him. Yep, I took my stupid consequences and I'll deal with him using traditional way. Actually, not really. He really kicked my ass as usual and I think, okay, maybe this is my time to give up. So if you guys didn't know, I got COVID at the moment and I think playing Souls games wasn't a great idea after all. That's why this run took forever to make because not only I have to farm more materials than usual, but also my brain couldn't keep up with all these bosses and I died a lot. On the next day, I feel a bit better so I went to fight Gideon. Again. As you guys know, Gideon is not as easy as people say it, so I think I have to rebuild my strats. This time, I'm playing it patiently. It's best for me to save all of my spark perfumes before he heals. I just have to attack him slowly if I see the opportunity. I cannot be too greedy because so far it leads me to nowhere. So after he drank his flask, it's time to destroy his poise. I still cannot be too aggressive with him because his comet can kill me in one hit. So just when I see the chance. I waste I think I wasted three bottles in total because he was really good at dodging and at the end I killed him with my daggers. I think spark aromatics become less impactful when fighting endgame bosses, so I think I have to use my daggers more often. I went back to Leonia to get Wing Sword Insignia so I can deal more damage with my daggers by doing chain attacks. This will replace the Fire Scorpion charm.
I also give the Blood Boy Aromatics a second chance this time. I don't know if I use it the right way, but well, I hope it's worth it. Well, maybe I can feel its power a little bit. Unfortunately, it only lasts for 60 seconds, so I think it's not really worth it. It might be a better option if I use different weapons. Also, I did a lot as well in this fight, but I didn't die in the first phase. Instead, I sacrificed a bit of my health to get thrown away by Godfrey. With the fight against Godfrey, it really helps me to master these daggers so I can beat the god afterwards. Sometimes my attacks couldn't reach him, same problem as before, but honestly the fight wasn't that crazy on his first phase. And because I solely used these daggers, it took me a couple minutes before finally reaching his second phase. I know I said the spark didn't do much damage to Godfrey, but I was comparing him to other bosses. The sparks still deal far more damage compared to my daggers though. It's rather a challenging fight. It's not a complete bullshit like Godskin Duo, but I still have to maintain my range from him and also at the same time get super close or else my perfumes and daggers couldn't reach him. Grab attacks are very dangerous, but I see a small opening on one of his grab attacks. I was able to use all my perfumes and the rest is just patience. I have to beat him this time because I wasted too many materials on those sparks. For the final fight, as usual, I have to get the Crimson Hole tier for the precaution. One thing I didn't expect is I didn't die a single time from Radagon, and the fight was super fun as well. I mean the fight with Radagon, I mean not Elden Beast. To be fair, I died a lot from Elden Beast. Looking back at this fight, I think this is by far my best Radagon fight out of all challenges I did previously. Because Radagon is weak to fire and using Spark Aromatics is very effective on him. I decided to save some of them for Elden Beast. The daggers were also deal quite some damage to him, so I think working solely with daggers can definitely take him down. If I use all of the 10 bottles on Radagon, yes, the fight will be very short but taking down Elden Beast will be much harder. I see I can dodge most of Radagon's attacks right now, but some of them are still persist. For example, the teleporting move is unpredictable sometimes and I get hit by it a few times. I think that's the only thing I got hit actually, I couldn't think of anything else. With fast attack speed, I can land multiple hits on him, but openings. This is very impactful because Radagon doesn't really have that much HP, so by doing this, I think it's more efficient. For Elden Beast, yeah, he has more health than Radagon for sure. Also immune to everything, but at least having a few bottle of sparks helped me deplete a bit of his health. The fight with Elden Beast is quite long honestly and that's the reason why I died a lot. The reason I got the Crimson Hole tier is to protect myself from the Elden Stars, right? But most of the time, I died because of the Golden Rain. I always having troubles with those things. Sometimes I can dodge them perfectly, but other times I just got hit by all of them and died. I would say I beat Elden Beast most of the time because of luck, but that's okay. I just have to be lucky once to beat him. Also, one more thing, I almost got hit by the golden grip and that thing do a massive damage, so I was lucky enough to not get hit.
and I beat Elden Ring. Hooray! <coughs> From perfumes, it technically turned into a dagger only run. Not the best run I had, but I still had fun nonetheless. I did all this playthrough while getting sick from COVID and I think some stuff could have been better. If you guys have any inputs, please do not hesitate to put it in the comment section down below. Uh, it really helps me a lot. And also before the video ends, I think I'm gonna make a member exclusive videos for each version of the challenge runs. From starting from this one, I think. But yeah, I'm not sure yet. Let me know what you guys think about this. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.